blah blah. Bruno's <laughs> podcast. There you go. That's what's up. And this is the entrance music for one and only. Who we have Ryan Robertson in the house. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? Hey, <laughs> thanks for coming over. So this is your fighting music, and uh, yeah, let's go straight away. You are a fighter. You are mu- uh, you are a movie maker and and lover. Can I use that? No? You can use lover, <laughs> movie maker. Very central here. <laughs> oh my God! Let's let's get in touch with that side of you. Uh, well, so I know Ryan for now probably two years, I guess. Um, since it's the been first that time. Long. Yeah, it is. Feels feels like nothing. It feels like a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> so when the first time I moved to Bali, I started going to Bali MMA, and that's where we met. And Ryan is one of the coolest dudes who holds pads for me. And uh, yeah, we just have this amazing chemistry. Yeah, it's uh, usually we just slip around and fall on our faces, <laughs> yeah, and we like do backflips together as well. <laughs> and we do backflips. Now that you told me how to land one. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey. 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 Um, cool, Ryan. Now, listen, thank you so much for coming over. Ah, I know you're awesome. busy, man, doing movies, uh, coaching. So, do you coach as well, or you just train yourself as to be a fighter? Uh, I coach as well. Well, I don't really, I've been taking classes lately. I've mm-hmm. just more been doing private sessions with clients. Because you're um, that good. Because I'm that good. Duh. Uh, um, okay, let's go. I think let's dive in straight away in your fighting kind of career, and then we can move on talking about movies and all the other stuff. Uh, yeah, so you've been fighting now. Uh, it, was it professionally at some point? Is it still professionally? Is like professional? I'm a professional MMA fighter, mm-hmm. or Muay Thai and boxing. Uh, I started at 21, which was I don't know. I guess that's late these days in yeah. the in the fight scenes. But um, yeah, started there. Just love fighting, and eventually went pro because I wanted to start making some money. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the whole uh, love uh, with martial arts, how did that start? So you mentioned uh, um, earlier you're from Perth, from Australia. And um, uh, yeah, how did the whole martial art journey start? Uh, I would say I was, I don't know, six or seven with my dad. Dad put me in karate and taekwondo. That's where I started. And then uh, I always loved fighting. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I think, I found a UFC video and right, I was right. like, I saw that and I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> I want to do this. Uh, and then my uncle said, oh, i got a friend who does that, mm. which at the time when I was 21, that's 14 years ago or something like that, 15 years ago. And it was nothing like MMA, especially in Perth and Australia was non-existent. You right, know, right, it, was, right. it was quite small. So uh, to find someone who did it, I went and trained twice and mm-hmm. then fought. So just to give a more idea, like, um, so you started when you're 21. How old are you now? 35. It took you a while. Wow, <laughs> you, you've been doing a lot of fighting, dude. <laughs> <It's> like, uh, <laughs> so 21, you're 35 now. So yeah. it's been 14 years, 14 years of yeah. journey of doing that. And then um, I want to actually go back more about talking about the traditional martial arts, what mm. you did so you, when you were younger. So karate, was it Shotokan? Was it the point-based thing? Was it I something think else? it was point-based from recollection. I was quite young when I did it. Um, Six years, that's not that young. <laughs> 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 that's just, come on, you're a grown man. I can't even remember how old I am. <laughs> Got to go back to how. Yeah, I should continue being old. a professional martial artist. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah no, I, it was... I think it was point fighting because I remember we we used to put on some um, the vest and the headgear and yeah. Well, we that's would, for TKD. You uh, would have a vest and t- and that kind of stuff, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't recall. <laughs> I do remember because <laughs> I did because you've done yeah. Yeah, I did shut a can and I was competing and then I I did TKD because just to improve my kicks and it was yeah. really really cool and then we had that. The thing, what I didn't find very comfy because it's kind of on your way. You can't it's really sort like of restricts you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, mainly it was like then they can count the points. Like when a tap, you can see hear the the sound and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you did the so karate and taekwondo at the same time. Not at the same time. No, I started in taekwondo and then uh, we moved somewhere mm-hmm. and then I did karate. I think that was the way it went. Oh, okay. And okay. Then, uh, but I didn't really do it for long. It was, you know, I got my yellow belt with a few stripes and then uh, moved on. I think I went from 
what did I say? Ta- I started in Taekwondo. I can't remember. You started in I started in one of them. I went yeah. to the next one. And yeah. then I think I went into like football, like AFL, Australian rules football and, okay. and cricket and basketball. And So basically you're very kind of where at the time you were just an active kid who did all these different sports. Yeah. Right. So then, then, uh, then you saw the, um, the, what was the, um, the fighting stuff, what do you say? Uh, UFC. UFC. So you saw yeah. UFC and you were just like, wow, this yeah. is cool. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And then, but then you already didn't do martial arts anymore at the time or you still were doing No, I hadn't been doing martial right, arts right. for years and years. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. so then you're like, oh shit, I, I have this baggage and this, this knowledge of doing these things. Then obviously you need to do some wrestling. Yeah. Well, I got into a lot of street fights for some reason. People just wanted to punch this pretty face. And uh, Shit, do tell, do tell. <laughs> what was the reason? Like, are you, were you like a mouthy kid? You were, no, you were? I think I was confident. I was a oh. confident kid, and uh, I didn't back down from people who, mm-hmm. like, I don't know if people thought confidence was cocky and right, people right, right. Want, didn't like that. And, you know, someone would bump into you and say something like they want to start a fight. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd just be like, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to punch me? Let's go. <laughs> no problem. I don't mind. And then I'd, you know, I'd generally win everything and I'd be like, you're okay? Yeah. <laughs> we good? Do you want to go again? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go again? Uh, okay. And um, so there was at some point like now in Australia that also UFC whole scene kind of became quite popular and people started doing more fights and organizing stuff. Yeah, slowly and slowly. So when I started, uh, like I said, I my uncle had a friend who did it. So I went and trained with him. I did two training sessions and then I fought on the weekend, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like two training sessions ever in my life. Wow. And I went and I ended up going to a friend's dad's 40th where they peer pressured me into having one beer, which turned into two beers, which turned into a very big night. <laughs> and then I rocked up because the fight show started. We had to be there. I think it was 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. So I was still drunk, I think. And uh I was like, oh, I saw my opponent because we, we weighed in on the day and they matched us on the day because it was amateur fights. Yeah. And I saw my opponent. I was like, hmm, I'm hungover and stuff, but he looks pretty small. I could probably, or not small, he was bigger than me, but I was like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. And then he took his shirt off and he had like fucking 12 pack of abs. <laughs> I was like, this might be a little bit harder than I expected. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you what. Did I get the shit kicked out of me? Wow. And that that was the first one? That was the very that first was the one. Very first yeah, one. he kicked, I, I lost count how many times he kicked me in the leg. Wow. I couldn't walk for a week. And I was just like, I love this. Wow. <laughs> this is great. But do you think it would be outcome the same if he would actually kick you in the face and like really knocked you out and kind of. I think I still would have loved yeah? it. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because in karate days, I was I, I, I did felt like proud that I did the the fighting thing, but just coming back home, always with busted nose, busted lip, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, just didn't really felt like I want to do this forever. <laughs> <laughs> just it, yeah, well, there might be something wrong with my like the head, but yeah, um, you know, because a lot of people, that's why we they they introduce padding and all that sort of stuff, so that mm. they can ease people into it and mm. not just put them in there and they get annihilated and then that's yeah, it yeah yeah i think it, it really dies. depends like what was the um kind of selling point for you because like for me karate was just like it was i don't know considered to be oh this kind of dangerous martial martial art and we hear these stories where people get really hurt even just doing karate that's you know this is not y- yeah it's well, a yeah. point karate man like yeah, you still, know people still get knocked out yeah yeah i remember one of the i got this nasty kick in my jaw like this guy uh, i was brown belt at the time he was black belt and he really needed to prove that he's better than me <laughs> i on this one like national competition and the guy just kicked me so hard in like the, uh, the roundhouse. Yeah. I thought my jar just went to my ear. <laughs> I was like, fuck. And then next like two weeks, I was like, I couldn't chew. Not, I just like, that was nasty. And then just thinking like to deal with this on a normal basis, like every time you're in pain and uh, I don't know, for me, it didn't make much sense. Yeah. But I do understand like the adrenaline and especially if you win, mm. that adrenaline is fucking insane. It's awesome. Uh, it is an awesome feeling. Like I, so I, a lot of people don't enjoy the overall experience. They only enjoy it once they win. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, yes, I won. Oh, it was all worth it. And it was all good and this and that. Because you go through a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, of course. You know? But I enjoy all of it. Mm. I enjoy the emotional roller coaster that I go through. I still 
you know, people look at me and they go, they don't, they don't think I would get nervous. They see me stand in the ring against my opponent or mm-hmm. weigh in or whatever, and I'm, I look cool as a cucumber. But sometimes inside, <laughs> shit be turning upside down. <laughs> little, little Ryan is really crying his eyes out. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I, when I coach my, my students and all that sort of stuff, I sort of talk to them about that. You know, I've broken down in tears before I've gone out and fought. Um, then I've gone out and fought and come back and gone, fuck it, that was awesome! Mm. You know, and it's just... It's the, the, pre j- the j- pre-fight jitters are crazy. I remember for me, all, my stomach was always... Yeah. Mental. I was I went to toilet like ten times. I thought my bum hole was hurting. I was like, "What the fuck?" And then as soon as you finish that fight, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, it's how yeah. crazy like the mental state can just just do whatever else with your body. Yeah. Um, can we show any of the fights? Do we yeah. have anything on YouTube? Yeah, jump onto my YouTube. Here we are. This is the fight. Just getting ready. This one, one of your last fights. Yeah, this was my last fight. Yeah. Yeah. He's from New Zealand and trains out of city kickboxing. Yeah. It's uh, not very long. It was actually one of my quickest fights. Really? Yeah. I'm sensing that you win it. <laughs> you uh, did win it. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize he was going to strike with me as much as yeah. he actually did. So I heard he was a jiu-jitsu guy, good jiu-jitsu oh, guy. Oh, right. And a lot of my shots actually didn't hit him. You know, he blocked a lot of them. Mm. Besides the leg kicks, I landed them. Mm. Fuck, that's a lot. Well, obviously, it depends how it goes. That was my attempt of a spinning kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> First spinning kick I've ever thrown in a fight. I'm not, oh, I'm not the, great, the greatest oh, at spinning. Because so. you kind of like almost landed it with the... the sideways. Yeah, sideways. <laughs> yeah. That, those are dangerous ones. This is where I thought was, you know, how the fight was going to go pretty soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's it. Oh, that's it. You got him in. That's it. Oh, shit. Snatch and necks, cash and checks. Wow. Get that guillotine in and he had no place to go. No Fuck. place to go, yeah. I yeah, helped use the cage as a, like a pinning point. Yeah, nice. And like for you to come up with that kind of solution for this fight, like is this uh, um, a result of just experience and, and like, no, I'm not doing the microphone properly. <laughs> um, it's a result of experience and kind of figuring out this, this actually could kind of get him in or that was very natural and very like, you just went for it and... It, it was just natural. Yeah. I, um, I'd ha- actually been catching a lot of boys in the gym mm. with the standing guillotine, using mm. like the wall in the gym as, as the pinning I like point the sentence well, so. we just take it out of context. I, I catch a lot of boys I in the gym. I catch a lot of boys in the gym. <laughs> 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 uh, we're please hot, come, we're come, sweaty. Come train in Bali, come <laughs> train in Bali, mate. Uh, Ryan is going to be there in the we corner. We cuddle ready. hard. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> there you go. That's what's up. That's what we needed. That's what we needed. And uh, how many professional fights have you had uh, all together now? Um, I think it's about uh, in MMA, um, eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. 18 MMA, so what else are we talking about? I had 12 amateur fights. Uh, mm-hmm. I went 6 and 6 in amateur. Um, and yeah, when I first started in that, like I said, the, the MMA was nothing really, right, right, you right. know. So I had to fight whoever they could find me, which I was quite a small person at the time. I was, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, I'm pretty big now. You know? yeah, <laughs> massive. <laughs> um, no, but back then I probably, I walked around at 60 kilos. Right. And the smallest people they could find were people cutting down to 65. Oh, so, so they I didn't even have your weight category. Didn't even have my weight category. Oh, so shit. I'd fight at 65 kilos. Right, um, right. Everyone weighing in super shredded in their underwear and I've got some pants on and some <laughs> eating a burger and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like kind of dying from cutting weight. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh man, <laughs> I've been running, <laughs> sweating. <laughs> Oh my god, that's funny. But now, now obviously it's t- very different. So, I get this is this is me. I'm surrounded by a lot of MMA fighters and stuff. I have no fucking clue about all these like the the, the weight categories. Like there's a so MMA they have um, so like the feather super feather. What is it? I don't even know. I think there's in MMA there's obvi- there's a lot less than boxing. I think boxing has a, a weight category oh, okay. every two and a half kilograms. Right, right, right. It's like they got the super fly weight special weight i don't know yeah, but <laughs> but mma is about every i think it's about every five five kilograms right, it right. sort of changes um as it gets heavier 
the size differs just because of the percentage of body size. You know? Right, right. So, okay, let's let's just talk about from what is the lightest weight in in MMA? In MMA, fifty two kilos. Fifty two kilos. Yeah. Is there oh, a sorry, name for it? Forty eight. Forty eight. Forty eight. Jesus. Generally, Christ. like in the UFC, uh, I think fifty seven is the lightest. You're talking about male. Contestants, you're not talking about talking female. about male, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's like half of me, <laughs> yeah. It's tiny. <laughs> I like crazy. we got a couple of the boys in the gym that are that weight. Wow, yeah. it's like this, if they're stronger, wind around so they can just go like <laughs> they're just you just and they, they blow away. <laughs> wow, okay, okay. So, and then from that weight up, it's every five kilos, then. Uh, yeah, so it goes 48 to 52, which mm -hmm. I th what's that, four kilos, and then 52 to 57, which is five, 57 to 61. Right, right, right. Um, and do you have different names for each of those or no? Yeah, so there's... Just they gave up on it. The smallest one, atom weight. Oh, my God. <laughs> very, very tiny. <laughs> then you have straw weight, which is 52. right. Flyweight, which is my general division, right, which right, is 57. Right. Oh, flyweight sounds cool. Flyweight sounds cool. Straw and at it. Oh. It's a bit better than Ant. Especially, <laughs> especially now when the Ant-Man came out. <laughs> 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 they have that whole fucking uh, uh, Adam world and whatever. Yeah. And they get so super. That's where all the 48 kilo boys are. <laughs> yeah, that, I worked on that, uh, that film, that one. I uh, had a very nasty costume and all that stuff. But I was hanging out with Paul. Like he was, yeah, he was pretty, yeah. cool, pretty cool dude. And it was the best interaction was like, I'm wearing this fucking mask, like the, like this bucket in my head. And I hear he's right next to me and he's like cracking a joke and he's like, oh, and the other actors are laughing and I'm like, oh, that, was, that was good one, Paul. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so so Adam, Straw, Feather, which is you. Fly, fly. fly sorry. Yeah. Oh, Fly is even better. And then next? Uh, bantamweight, which is 61 kilograms. Uh, then it's Featherweight, which and is 66 Wow, 66, okay, and then? Lightweight at 70, I think it's 70 kilos, 70 point something. Right. Um, like welterweight is 77. Is it? Yeah, middleweight. That, that would be me. So I, I used to fight in karate 75, so I would be waterweight. 77. Then. Yeah, so I, Welterweight, yeah. And then what's the, after, under uh, 77? Lightweight. Which is how much? Kilo, how many kilos? 70.2, I think. Oh, okay. There's no way I can get to that one. This is, <laughs> fuck, I would need to do some serious dieting. I don't know. Because I even struggled to get to 75. And and I, I don't know how it's for you. Like, for my my category, is always I had taller motherfuckers. Like, yeah. I had the 75ers, man. They were, like, two meters or six feet something. It's just like, ugh. Yeah, especially in, like, karate and mm. taekwondo and, um, yeah. like, kickboxing or Muay Thai. Yeah. They're all just like super tall people, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, and I but I did figure it out. Like for me, it worked. I figured out how to get and close close the distance with the karate guys. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that I really worked on was like the uh, spinning push kick. Yeah, I, I remember in two competitions I broke someone's ribs. Like, and I, I just. Because and that's what it was I learned from karate. So I was uh, timing when they come in, then I spin and just push in. And it was like, yeah, there. <clears throat> when you see some people pull them off, they look. They look nasty. They look beautiful, mm, mm, but nasty. <laughs> beautiful, but nasty. Yeah. And I remember I, I, I kicked one guy in the balls big Ooh. time, big time. But that was, I've, that that one, I'm not so um, embarrassed. I'm more embarrassed. I actually did TKD uh, when I moved to UK, like maybe seven years ago, and I went to some TKD training stuff. And I came in, so I used to do it a long time ago, and I, you know, I'm coming in now, I have no belt, nothing. Yeah. And this this chick who's like uh, brown or black belt, so she really need to, she, her thing was to show me that she's better than me. So she comes in and starts going full on on me and I went for the spinning, uh, the, the horse kick, the yeah. donkey kick. <laughs> went right to her vagina oh. and she just collapsed there and and i was like i'm so sorry I just, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time i was like yeah bitch what are you gonna show now <laughs> so bad um okay so <laughs> finding when um the uh, weights and stuff what what is your zone how do you what do you see when you fight do you see are you like feel like you control you or you just like so a lot of the time when i'm i'm fighting and feel the best is when i control the distance mm -hmm. so like i'll i'll spend the first when i'm fighting smart i'll spend the first maybe 30 seconds engaging but not 
not fighting. Right, you're like a t- uh, testing it I'm out. I'm testing, I'm finding out how fast they are. Right. I'm really testing their distance. I'm trying to make them miss and see how they move. Um, and then I know I can go in with a safer plan or game, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. Even though we have our overall game plan, it'd be like, oh, he's a wrestler, we're going to stay on the feet, you know. Right, right, right. But I just walk in and not know anything. I'm just assuming that I know. Mm-hmm. It's when people get caught early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I did that. I did that my second last MMA fight, or sorry, the MMA fight before that. I I was like, you know, a little bit, a little bit too chilled. And I like mm-hmm. faked and come in to throw a punch, and he just punched me so hard in the Do face. Do we have a video? Yeah, there should be video. <laughs> I've never been hit so hard in my life. I actually thought I warmed up with him out the back. I was like, we warmed up together for the fight, but we didn't. Yeah, yeah <laughs> fuck. Let's let's see when Ryan gets knocked out. Let's watch me get fucked up. <laughs> I don't think a lot of fighters are like, yeah, let's do that. Let's <laughs> <laughs> I need to see me to be beaten up. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's, it's whatever. Yeah, it happens. It's part of the... Exactly. You know, it happens to the best <laughs> of us. <laughs> All the guys who get knocked out, they usually say, yeah, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And then you get up with like this really fucked up face, and you do the Rocky Balboa's line where he's like, "It's, it's not about how hard you fall down. <laughs> <laughs> it's about who you get up and keep on going." Yeah, but if you can, uh. then probably you should lie on the floor for a bit. <laughs> Maybe it's not on here. Huh. Did you make sure that it's got deleted? It, it must have got deleted. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm surprised it's not on there. Oh well. Yeah, it's not on there. Um, but yeah, he punched me so fucking hard. I I didn't even know I was fighting. Yeah. I was like, Christy took me back up to the thing. I got I got dropped in the first probably 10 seconds. Uh, we fought for three minutes and something. Mm-hmm. And then um, Christy took me back up to the, the back rooms. And who's, I was like... Who's Christy? Christy's my fiance. She's oh, also a professional shit. MMA fighter. Oh, oh. shit. Oh, oh, sorry. No, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> P- pressing all the buttons. Hey. hey. Wow. Well, congratulations. When you guys got engaged? Uh, we got engaged some time ago. Mm. Mm. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah. um, she's probably going to ask me to edit that shit out. She actually <laughs> probably can't remember herself. So <laughs> it's okay. So what, was that um, on her fight? And I think it, proposed? Was, it was at her fight. I you propose, proposed her. I proposed to her after one of her fights inside the ring. Aww. It was on one Warrior series. So for two months, it was in like collaboration with the the people who ran one Warrior series, and you know, back and forth about how we we're going to do it and what I could do, and and buying the ring and trying to hide that from her. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and then flying to because it was in Singapore, so um, she was fighting in Singapore. Flying over to Singapore, making sure that like the metal detectors don't go off. I was like, make sure it's in my bag, and then she doesn't look at the X-ray thingy. Or yeah, it was a pretty stressful. Would it, would it detect metal detectors? Would it it detect wouldn't. The ring? No, it wouldn't. But yeah, you thought about it, obviously. Yeah. yeah, obviously, I don't. I'm like, oh, I don't want that chance to happen, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, and then I have to pull it out, and yeah, yeah. she sees. Oh, um, yeah, and then we got over there. She, I'm like, wrapping her hands. And all that's gone through my head is the is the speech I'm going to give to her. <laughs> <laughs> not not her speech. fight, because I was like, I was I was all good about her fight, and you just going to. Okay, what us. was the speech? Uh, Christy, <laughs> I'm going to look at you right now. <laughs> oh my oh. god, <laughs> Christy, <laughs> it went something like <laughs> <laughs> just licking your lip, Christy, mm, mm. biting your lip, yeah. <laughs> Um, shit, I can't remember, right? <laughs> something like, you know, I want to take on the world with her together. And, um, something and in the lines, I like you, let's yeah, get married, make a bunch of married. babies. Took me like ages it. to get the ring out of the box. I was <laughs> fucking fumbling in my in my pocket. And then I took it out of the box and then there was another box inside that box. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? It's <laughs> like <laughs> Russian matryoshka, Russian doll. <laughs> yeah, it's a Russian doll with a ring. Ah. Wow. Um, well, yeah. Obviously, obviously, you were very like nervous and stuff, and but... But there, there was not a moment where you thought that she would say no. 
No, was no, there wasn't a moment. Yeah. Where I thought you said no. Was it? Was it but like yeah. for the last three years? It was like when are we gonna get married? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> when are you gonna propose? No, she didn't actually want to get married. Oh, you said that. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> no, both of us didn't really want to get married, but you know, I sort of did. But yeah, yeah, we we didn't really care too much about the marriage. Thing. Right, right, right. But uh, yeah, it was. You just want to put the ring on and say it's mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I own you. No. <laughs> Let's cut that out. No. Oh, dude, this is one of those things with the marriage. Like, I mean, I can you know, everyone has different feeling, different understanding. I always struggle with that idea, like why people have to get married to you know if they live together, Show they're happy love together, and affection, like, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that well, that's how we feel. Like we don't need to sign yeah, a document so that then says. Why? Do you just think that it's going to be easier with like the paperwork in the future and like? Mm, nah, obviously if I don't know. I just like the, not even the idea of marriage. I I like it just being engaged. Engaged. Oh, okay. Engaged is married, to me. Mm. You know, we don't need to sign documents. Yeah, and Perth has different rules there. <laughs> if you're engaged, you're married. <laughs> if you're, in, if yeah, pretty much, <laughs> don't even yes. have to be engaged. You just live together. You're yeah. married. That's it. She said yes already. That's that's also funny. Like, and then it, like you get actually on the day when you get to uh, do your vows and stuff, and she's like, oh no, I, I changed my mind. Hey, no, <laughs> you you no backseas. You already said yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can't, can't back out of this now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, because I just recently saw this video about like how the um, you know why people why why women want to get married because there are so many other, other different inten- incentives which are mainly evil you know take <laughs> take the money away like yeah, the, secure, take the I'm kids safe. away and yeah. then they feel like all of this is gonna happen and the guys like I don't want to fucking get married look at all this crap yeah well I uh, think also like a lot of it's from we have grown up yeah get married get a job yeah uh, buy a house buy a car have a dog. Yeah, see, all yeah, of those children. things for me is like, th- those are bullshit. That's like, sad. I figured out those quite Sounds early. Sounds terrible to me. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I couldn't think of anything worse. I see people with their kids at, like, cafes, and I'm like, <laughs> ew. <laughs> <laughs> Come over to them. Hey, guys, e- ew. ew. You, you what? and you. That you. thing, keep it away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but do you want to have kids? Uh, maybe. Yeah. Like, maybe eventually. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking the experience, as you know, as painful it sounds. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. as painful it sounds. I think it's uh, one of those experiences you do when, uh, as a man, I guess, like uh, as a human being in general, just to the idea that you can create another fucking human being. That's Mm. pretty cool. Yeah, I made that, (laughs) and everyone's like, "Yeah, we know shit." (laughs) (laughs) I think he's annoying the fuck out of me. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly. I like that. There's a uh, on Instagram. There's this real traveling around something about the daughters that the oh yeah fathers uh, spoil their daughters. So whoever gets them, we have to deal with that shit. <laughs> some of the, some of the lines of that. Yeah. So if you have your daughter, so you spoil her, like yeah. train her fighting and everything, and whoever ends up with them, gonna get all yeah. of that shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the idea. You know, as a dad, you're gonna teach her like some chokes and stuff. Yeah. If he does this, if you, he does you this, you fuck him up like this, like that. I will show, Daddy shows you. Yeah. <laughs> And then, so now with the all the martial art uh, or the fighting career, so you continue fighting, you continue the pro fighter? Yes. Yeah. So I have a fight coming up in a week and a half. Right. And that is a pro fight. Pro fight, yeah. Right. And then, um, and then you just continue representing mm-hmm. Bali MMA and fighting and... Uh, um, yeah, I have another fight locked in for January back in Perth in Australia. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then uh, we'll see what happens after that. Right. Yeah, I'm... I'm old. Yeah, you I'm think old. you're old? Thirty-five is old. Thirty-five is old for the fight game. Yeah, you know, and I can't train like. What is the What is boys. the average age for people to um, to um, retire from MMA? I'm not sure, but I would say it's around now. Like I, I, <laughs> I could feel it's around I, now. <laughs> I feel it's around now. Like I felt good. Um, you know, 32, 33. I felt awesome. I felt really good yeah. in the last fight. Um, but I'm also like. Over training hard, yeah. You know, I have, I, dude. I know that feeling so I wanna, well. <laughs> I just want to train what I want to train, and yeah. then you know, and then it's less training. And it's less training. <laughs> you're less sore. You're less tired. You're less hungry. <laughs> because uh, I looked it up uh, before somewhere that they say that uh, the prime, the strength, the prime strength for a, a male should be 35. Yeah, that's what yeah, I, I, I was told. I, I heard dude, 32 or something like and that. So. Listen, like when I'm talking to you and I'm training to you, like with you guys, and I'm there in the gym, and you say 35, it feels old. I am gonna be 40 in one year. 
Shit. I can't he's, believe he's it. Old. He's old. <laughs> I, I just can't believe it. Like, I go in a gym. I'm a totally idiot usually. I do some weird shit and people look at me like, this is guy. And then I'm like, I'm one year from 40. I'm like, mm. what the fuck? But like the strength yeah, wise. feel young, you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean like, you don't feel old. Like strength wise, it's like, you know, I would say like, yeah, probably about 34, 35, I was strong, but I don't think I'm much weaker now. I'm still can mm. most, I can do most of the stuff I could do. And I think it's about maintaining it like, and just yeah, not doing stupid shit with your body, I guess. Yeah. I was a bricklayer for like 12 years. and You were a bricklayer. Yeah. That's I used to what's build up. Houses. So like strength, <laughs> I had strength. Yeah. For ages, oh, I don't feel as strong as I used to feel, but now, but um, mm. only because I don't lift bricks every day. But yeah, yeah, it took a long time for me to even feel a little bit weaker. Right, you right, know? right. You should be have your name, the Ryan the Bricklayer. I'm gonna <laughs> lay you like a brick, motherfucker, <laughs> <laughs> or just like to a lady. I'm gonna lay you. <laughs> I'm gonna lay you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I think that's crazy. All the assum- consumption, no consumption, but. Um, Assumption about Assumption. the age, how it used to be so different, man. Like people in their 35s were like the, these old annoying farts who were just like dealing with their f- almost teenage kids or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they, like they felt so old. And like I remember my dad in 50s, he said, that's it, I'm going to die soon. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? And he wasn't lying, he died in 63. <laughs> 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 yeah, dad, whatever you are, love you. No, he was alcoholic, so it was his own fault. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but how, like, back home in Perth? Uh, so you still have family there? Um, yeah, still got family. I got family sort of all over, the, scattered across the world, but um, most of my family's in Perth and, and just outside of Perth. Yeah, and then when you meet your, like, peers, old old mates, how, how are they? Most, uh, most, most of them probably have kids and families. And yeah, stuff. yeah. My, my friends, or, or they want kids, mm. you know. Um, most of my friends are a bit younger than me. They're... They may be three years younger than me, mm. um, and yeah, one one friend he's got he's got kid he he has his house and yeah, yeah, girl yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And my other mate he's he's got his girl and a house and want, wants kids and I just can't think of anything worse. Yeah, I don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> <laughs> nothing nothing against kids. You you do you, but nothing for me and my lifestyle. I don't want those little shits running around. <laughs> <laughs> Your girlfriend's going to love this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> she don't want any of those shits <laughs> running around either. She's like, I couldn't remember the vows or the, the proposal or the, <laughs> the, the offer. <laughs> One time offer. Um, <laughs> uh, cool. Listen, let's have a little break. Um, yeah. And then we come back in shortly. There you go. We're back. And um, <clears throat> Mr. Ryan, how do you say your last name? Robertson. 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 Mr. Robertson. Do you have a middle name? Peter. 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 <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Peter. Peter. Nice. Is it like the, because of the religious stuff uh, back home? Because like where I grew up, it was like very Catholic and they would give you like these Catholic kind of uh, Christian names. Was okay. it the same reason? No, it's my dad's name. Oh, it's your dad's name. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, like Eastern Europe, we grow up, we don't have middle names. We just have first and last names. It's name. just a thing that think people think is trendy. Oh. <laughs> you know, it? you know when they start hyphenating words like Marianne, hmm. you know, and... So people are crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think, my, I think my mate's got like three middle names. Three middle names? Yeah. Oh, that's very typical for like... Um, a Brazilian he's people. Italian. Brazilian, they have Maria Isaura Magdalena. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what do you want me to call you? Just Joe. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the best one. <laughs> Just call me Pete. <laughs> that's funny one. Um, okay, so we spoke about fighting. We spoke about your personal life and you engage and, and hate kids. <laughs> that's going to happen. And uh, yeah, the the big one I want to talk to you is about movie making and filmmaking. And uh, you start dabbling around with that how long ago now? Uh, the film stuff, maybe. Well, it's, that's a complicated one. I've always done like a little bit of video editing, but nothing with like proper software or anything right, right, like right. that. You know, it's just been. Uh, I use some free software that is mm. was pretty shit at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, just to make like highlight video clips of the fighters and fight team and stuff. But I uh, started getting into it properly maybe a year and a half ago. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Year and a half. So that's been intense year and a half. Yeah. Because like I'm I'm following your social media and I can see like you you've been doing a lot of stuff. <coughs> And then, um, so then there was some kind of attraction to the the whole movie stuff a while ago, but you never really kind of thought that you're going to do it? No, I, yeah, I never thought of, like, doing the, the visual effects or mm-hmm. anything like that. It was just, uh, I, I actually did want to be a stuntman at one stage. Oh, shit. Yeah. What happened? Why, why you didn't do it? Uh, I just don't think I found the opportunities. I didn't chase, right, right, chase right. that. Because obviously way, also... In Perth, it would, you wouldn't have many opportunities. I don't you think need so. to go to, what, either Sydney or Yeah, yeah I would have had to Melbourne. go over east. Yeah. Um, and then, and I, I was also fighting at the time. I had mm. my business of bricklaying and all that. So I was like quite busy. Mm, 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 you know, where you fall into that that thing of going, oh, well, I don't really have time to go right, do right, that right. stuff. Uh, but yeah, I always loved acting and mm, mm. fight fighting, like play fighting and, mm. and dying lots mm. as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> what did you like to do as a kid? I like to die. I like to die. I'm gonna show you this one way I can die, man. It's the best way to die ever. <laughs> <laughs> me, me and my friend, when we were, I think we were like 12 years old, and we used to love Blade. Yeah, so yeah. Fuck, we, who we, didn't? Yeah, so we'd pretend we were fighting vampires all the time, and we'd get beaten up, and I'd like do flips and fall on the floor and all that sort right, of stuff. Right, so. right. The movies did some crazy shit with us mm. as a kids how easy we're influenced. And it's like now that you think about it, kids nowadays, all they mainly stare is in fucking TikTok, you know? It's like, yeah. you, you, it's like how do you, cr- I don't know, I really struggle to understand how their brain works nowadays. Like, this is cool for today, tomorrow, something else is cool. Yeah, this is good until this. I scroll to the next thing. <laughs> I know, but like, when we watch, I don't know how it was for you. For me, it was like post-Soviet Union country. We just got these these shitty uh, VCRs and mm-hmm. then it would, like it's all scratched and shit and you watch and the blade is like, you know, saying his shit and you just, wow, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> did you see that kick you did? What? My, my worst one was Jackie Chan. I lo- watched his shit and then I would go in my garden and do backflips. That's how I learned how to do a front flip and backflip. That's how I almost Jackie broke Chan. my neck. That's what I did. <laughs> and I literally, I, I remember there's this thing you put uh, to put the pieces of wood to cut it like you have a like a bigger tree like in countryside you need to like put this i don't know what's the name of it yeah um so and then i would step on that it's about a meter and a half height and i would go backflip and thank god that the soil was quite th- soft yeah i just landed straight <laughs> my hand fucking in the floor and i just got up full mouth i'm not saying full mouth with the soil and i was like fuck this shit <laughs> <laughs> fuck you jackie chan <laughs> It, yeah, he was a big thing for me to watch. I loved watching all of his films. And, you know, the big promotion of him was mm. he did all his own stunts. Mm, mm. So you're like, oh, if he can do it, yeah, like, let's do yeah. it. But I think in those days, no one really talked much about he did or she did her own stunts. It didn't matter because we still believed, like... It was them, yeah. yeah. we thought it was them. Yeah. Like, wow, come on. They do their thing. And now being in f- f- in stunt industry for fucking almost eight years, jeez... I've seen where, like, this actor wouldn't even make certain step just in case they hurt themselves. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the thing is, like, it's not, you know, it's not all, all the actors are, you know, prima donnas, which is the case quite often. Mm. But even they want to do it, production is not going to allow them to do it because yeah, the risk is too high. if they get high. hurt, they can't continue on filming. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, so as a kid, you enjoyed movie stuff. So, for, so uh, from the martial art perspective, which was your biggest inspiration? Uh, as in, like, the movie? Like, for a fight, so you obviously get into fighting, then in the movie... Yeah. Like, it goes kind of hand-to-hand. Gladiator. Gladiator. With Russell Crowe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you saw that film and you're like, I want to do MMA. I was like, (laughs) (laughs) I want to do it with swords. (laughs) Um, I can imagine just (laughs) come over with, like, a stick or something. (laughs) Oh, I thought it's no rules. Because in the beginning, that's how it almost was, right? Beginning, Before the yeah. MMA came out, there was like there was no, no rules, weapons, no weight categories, just like go crazy on each yeah. other. The the only rule was you weren't allowed to bite them or like eye, eye poke, gouging the hook, no fish hook and no biting. Hook, biting. Yeah, but you could pull their hair, you could punch, punch them, them in the, in the balls. nuts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember one guy was in like on the ground and the, they couldn't get out and he, he knew where his dick was <laughs> and he just <laughs> above, 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 straight in the nuts like I think it was like 10 times he I was like oh my god was. <laughs> it was like 
right on it. Oh my god, this right. is so funny. And everyone's just like, I, I didn't know what his dick was, so I would win him, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> and the guy's like, Yeah, micro dick is paying back, bitch. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Yeah, it's like, it was crazy to also look at all the Gracies when they were going in these fights against, you know, much way bigger people. Yeah. And still wearing geese, even though, like, you, if you go against this wrestler in his underwear, obviously he can grab you. But, <laughs> but this, you can't grab him. Yeah. You, can, you can grab him by dick. <laughs> <laughs> you can just grab his dick. <laughs> they are both with Oh, my God. <laughs> um, well, yeah, it was just mental how these. His, the biggest one was like. Especially with Gracie was making the name for and like this fighting. Yeah. They have weight categories that they would not. There was no know. weight category. It's like, this yeah. guy's two twice your weight. Like, what the hell? Yeah. Um, I think I think Gracie walked around at 170 pounds, mm. which is, I think, about 70 kilos or 60. 170. I'm not sure. I think it's about 77, actually. Um, and the guys who were fighting were. To to twenty to thirty pounds and which is like a hundred and yeah, twenty nice kilograms. That, that guy just sits on you, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't have to do anything. Yeah, I remember um, he fought one guy. I can't remember what his name was, but in one of the first mm. UFCs, he won eventually, and then he had to he had to forfeit because he was so tired. Right. Like from this huge and not an ounce of fat. He was just. Just muscle, yeah. Muscle I think I remember that one. Shit. Yeah. I, he pulled his hair out. Like literally had a chunk of his hair yeah. that went on the ground. Yeah, yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. It was like, man, that just looks tiring. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry. We kind of moved we, we, on. We moved, back. moved away from the <laughs> we, movies. We're going on to the movies. But it goes, you know, side by side though. Your attraction to the fighting and stuff. And obviously you watch the, uh, f the fighting movies. But then. When you just kind of had your first idea about movie making idea, you want you thought like I'm gonna do action movies, or there was no I, really. I think I, I I really am inspired by sci-fi and mm. action, and and more of the the theme of making something that isn't real. Right, right, right. Real, right, right. You know, um, bringing imagination to life. So yeah. you're watching it like, oh, wow, like yeah, this is yeah. cool that people like Avengers, they're in space and you're mm -hmm. like, you travel to different worlds mm -hmm. and, you know, bring that imagination to you. Yeah, that, that is life. the one. So, so you, you do enjoy um, mushrooms, I'm guessing. Oh, <laughs> no, nah, I've never had mushrooms, but no, no, nah, never what? had them. Dude. Had some acid once. Yeah. Right. I was watching Fast and Furious Five, I think. It was. It was. Am I on? It was very fast. Um, it was fast, and they. Oh, oh bro, that tripped me out hard. Really? I was watching them. It was when Vin Diesel and and The Rock were like staring at each other. Yeah, it was and so you intense. Gonna make out at some and point. they were like, it was so intense. And then they turned like a hundred years old. They went a hundred <laughs> years old, and then they get back to normal. And then a hundred years old, and I was like, oh my god, this is too much. Oh, <laughs> this is too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow don't do drugs kids no drugs are really bad but if you use them <laughs> responsibly <laughs> it could be pretty cool it could be pretty cool yeah uh, no with mushrooms i was um yeah in the, i had a couple of times experience it's it's definitely it's one of the things is like it opens different pockets of your mind mm. like which you wouldn't think of and also i think one of those like when you question yourself about something all of a sudden that can kind of sort it out that it's it's achievable in my opinion it's achievable with a good breath works as well and yeah. you're living in bali here have you tried breath work yeah yeah how many times <clears throat> um i think i like twice or something Only like twice. that yeah. i did one time and i remember i was in fetus position and was crying yeah i was just crying and thinking about all the kind of shit what we consider oh this is you know, so bad and like there's no solution and then all of a sudden you just find solution right yeah. here. Simple, you know. Mm. So, yeah, kids do drugs sometimes when sometimes. you grow up. When yeah. You're not, you're not, <laughs> yeah, but you see also like that word drugs, it just has such, an, uh, such a negative it, connotation to it. It does. Because you know? mushrooms, it's, a, it's, it's, like, it's just it's something you find in a forest you know, here it's usually on a on a cow's shit. <laughs> Much better, right? And then it's a it kind of 
little bit poisons your body like you eat not a good mushroom yeah and, and then takes you to a different level yeah you know and they keep talking about that the vikings used to take mushrooms when they used to go to war yeah yeah and um, then a lot of fighters do the uh micro dosing uh i didn't know that you didn't know that oh. no with mushrooms no nah. really i literally talked about it today in the gym uh. <laughs> i'm not kidding you <laughs> Okay, I know. I know a lot of uh, jujitsu people like smoking weed. Mm. Helps helps them relax and just because jujitsu is about being relaxed and yeah, flowing yeah. and and having fun with it. And they they, I think the um, uh, like the combat commission or whatever it was in wherever, mm-hmm. think saying it's a it's a performance enhancing drug. Really? Yeah. Even though it's not, it's like you're just chilling. Wow. It's like, yo, what's up? Yeah. Let's yeah. have a roll. Yeah. Let's hug each other. <laughs> yeah. And if they would have like a glass of vodka, do you think anyone would care? No. No one would care. No. But just it's, because it's the same. <laughs> it's so stupid. Just because like that weed has this sh- shitty, not shitty, but the history of humans creating it's this evil thing. Mm. When I lived in Vancouver, I smoked weed for two years in a row, the best shit ever. I never touched alcohol. Yeah, had so much fun, so such a good time, and uh, they had amazing weed there. It was, uh, yeah, oh well, whatever. Uh, movie stuff, movie stuff. <laughs> I'm like, today <laughs> I'm on a row, just b- take you away from the subject. <laughs> movie stuff, um, and um, yeah, so the something what is not there creating stuff, and I, 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 it is interesting. As probably when I'm more grown up now, I, I don't really appreciate the CGI and all that stuff. Yeah. But even grown up, when I watched Avatar for the first time, I was like, wow. That's pretty cool. Avatar. Yeah. Avatar Did you see the second awesome. one? Yeah, I went and watched the yeah. second one. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Don't I won't say anything. But yeah, people really say good. good things, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so that kind of CGI, yeah. But then there's so many, even like up-to-date good movies, some of the CGI effects are... Like you think like you have m- so many millions in your budget and you still mm. make that explosion look like a fart somewhere in the dark. It's like, <laughs> what, what is this? Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's what I want to ac- accomplish with what I do with the visual effects mm-hmm. is that I want it to l- look as real as possible. Right, right, you right. know, that's, that's my goal. That's my aim. Obviously, you know, I'm not Marvel level. Yeah. You know, no, but it's about editor, you know. But yeah, definitely a goal that I'm, I'm achieving to, and that's what I like in in video and film and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And that challenge about, and also like the just to compare how it was ten years ago, well, what mm. kind of visual effects were available, and now someone who just sits in their you know basement and just got like some basic um, uh, softwares, they can create some, some incredible pretty cool stuff. stuff. Yeah. How did it all start? Did you just kind of like okay, I will try. Was there like you said like you like the project? So was there like opportunity for a project? Um, no, not to start with, to start with, I, I got, uh, After Effects, Mm -hmm. which was the VFX sort of stuff, uh, through Adobe. I already had Adobe from Photoshop. So I used to do a lot of movie posters and stuff like that. And then, uh, I just started following some tutorials on, on After Effects and, and then I would try to do my own things, but I didn't have much of an imagination. So yeah, (laughs) it was hard. It's hard, like. Oh, even even if with an imagination, I have all these things I want to make, but I either don't have the time or I don't have the money. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the good thing about having projects from other people is they're spending the money, and right, right, right. And then uh, it allows me to have the time to go do it. And they've also got the imagination, so it's like, yeah, you know, it's well, yeah. That's the I think that's probably the best way. So they pay you maybe not a lot of money, but some money. Some money, So it yeah. covers and you have a little bit of motivation. Yeah. You have a deadline and all these kind of things. Instead of you just sit and probably how many different projects you can come up with and, and you never really finish them. And yeah. There's no incentives and no reason for it to finish them. Yeah, just, exactly. Just Unless it's just for like your own portfolio yeah. to build. But, but even then it's like you need to buy assets. You need to obviously spend time on it so come a bit closer you're really flying around i'm there. really <laughs> flying around <laughs> ryan podcast properly hey um yeah like yeah buy assets you need to take time off of work or whatever it is so you're losing money there to do yeah. these projects uh so yeah it really benefits if you've got somebody who is willing to pay you obviously not the top dollar because you're not the that, top guy the top guy you know so <laughs> But you can produce something. You just need the project and people to pay for some assets so that you can 
put all those skills to the yeah. test. But um, you had some some interesting thing going on for what for about how long it took you to finish your project, your short movie, which was released um, what two three weeks Th th three weeks ago three maybe? weeks ago yeah yeah congratulations <laughs> on that thank you hey. um, and um, just you know I I watched the video. <laughs> Someone who works in the you know, film industry only sees the big movies and whatever. Obviously I can say like, yeah, there's a lot you know, there's a lot of stuff to work on and whatever. Yeah. But in the same time thinking about like your budget, your like all the all the things what you had. Yeah, um, yeah. I love it that you basically there's like you guys coupled up. So it was like Anthony with his girlfriend or yeah. with his <laughs> wife and you with your fiance and it's like, Here you go, that's uh pretty much our crew. That's our crew. Yeah. <laughs> and um so yeah, so tell me about how it all started. When I, I'm guessing quite a long time, you already had the idea, and then obviously I, I had a rough idea. I was like, mm. oh, I just wanted I wanted to film because I wanted to practice my filming skills as well. Yeah, um, but I wanted to film a fight scene with some VFX, and uh, I had no idea what sort of VFX. I just knew I wanted to do some fight choreography, fight scene, and add some sort of ma maybe magical effect or or like a lightsaber fight with some yeah. Star Wars and stuff like that. And then I was like, you know what? I'm somebody who I can't do small. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> can't do small. I can't do small. What? It's like, you know what? This so is modest. Be, I love it. <laughs> let's, how far can I actually push, push it? How far can I, how long can I make it? How big can I make it? Um, and what can we do? And I was like, oh, well, I got no actors. I got no money. I got, I got no, I don't have the right equipment. I'm like, okay, so let's do a fundraiser, <laughs> get some money. And then I obviously, I, I didn't make even the fundraising amount of money that I wanted, yeah. which still wouldn't have covered it. Um, but then my fiance, Christy jumped in, Anthony and his wife jumped in as actors. And uh, I had a friend who does sound design, so he did all the the mic stuff and, mm -hmm. and the sound, uh, which was yeah, great. Yeah, shout out to Anthony. Yeah. Obviously, all the rest of the people, but Anthony was on this podcast as well. So, Ooh. yeah, we had Make a sure you watch that one. nice little chat. Uh, he's he's an interesting dude. Yeah, I really enjoyed talking to him. And, uh, yeah, it was great for me to see that, like, you know, people are involved and everything happens. I kind of, like, in the very beginning, so, spoil, can we do spoiler yeah, alert? You can do spoiler yeah. Um, I just like in the beginning that I did not buy a second that those were two lesbian lovers. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Is it because, cause I know that's Anthony's uh, wife. Is it, but it was just like, oh honey, um, I don't know. <laughs> and then when your fiance, Chris, she was like practicing that, like what she's going to say, whether she was holding the ring. I was like, oh. <laughs> I, uh, it was cute though. It was cute. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of things like because the script was. I wrote the script, and it was just, it it was literally written on a document in like a paragraph of how the whole film was going to go. Yeah, you should start with it was written on napkin. On it was written paper. on a napkin, <laughs> and uh, and it was a bit wet, and people couldn't really read it, and then we just went from there. <laughs> um, but like after filming uh, the first part of all of that, I really wanted to refilm and and change mm. a lot of things but people had the haircut and all this sort of stuff and people didn't want to do it because we spent a lot of time doing it and that so we just did what we yeah had, you know exactly um, it, it'd be it would like in hindsight or oh, everything's always better in hindsight mm -hmm. but uh would have put a lot more time into the script a lot more time into how we could have set it up better. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And yeah no, it's stuff. always, this is the thing, like, I, 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 I'm pissed off with myself sometimes. Like, I just love to look at the negatives instead of actually the, consider the positives, that the everything was being achieved. And I do the same. Yeah. You know? Like, and it's, it's just, it's not, it's not a very good trait, especially when, like, in a sense, like, for us to get better, we need to practice. You yeah. know, like, just like I started this podcast, you know, how, what did I start it with? Like, I had shitty cameras, I had shitty this, I didn't know what I'm talking about, and it was not good. The only way to get better is just to do it again and again and again and again. Yeah. And, like, yeah. now even, like, for for the next project, you're going to be so much more aware of what you need. So much more aware. Definitely need more money. Definitely need more <laughs> get money. Get proper actors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> oh, snap. Oh, snap. <laughs> yeah. Um, I... 
I, I, I'm the same. I, I just look at the negatives. I'm like, oh, you know, mm. I could have done this better. I could have done that better. Um, and even with other people who are in the film industry, who are filmmakers, who have made like feature films and mm. Netflix films and stuff like that, they've all praised me on going, you got something out. Yeah, 100%. You totally know, agree. It doesn't matter that it, it's not amazing or mm. great or, you know, that high, high level that you're looking for. You got something out. Yeah, I had yeah. one, one of Christie's friends. He's a filmmaker from Australia. Made some feature films and, and some other films and stuff. And he, he said to me, he goes, I still got friends from film school who are still talking about doing that first project. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You know, it's been 10 years. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, <laughs> brother. I mean, like, I can't agree more about it. And this is, you know, living in the UK for so many years now. This is this mentality of talk to talk and not doing the fucking job, not doing the walk. Mm. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, we can get to the end, do the project, do and never yeah. anything happens. Yeah. I've, you know? worked, I've worked on, well, I haven't worked on them. I've been, like, acted on some short films. Mm -hmm, mm. And I've seen some of the cinematography on there, and I'm like, ooh, that looks really nice. Mm -hmm. Never seen it. Yeah, never seen it. Never got released. Never, never heard released. about what uh, what happened to it or anything. Yeah, because one thing is like to kind of start doing it. Also, like getting to the end. Like no matter what. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, all sorts of shit happens. Like right now we have a. I, I'm part of this quite interesting drama. Two years ago, I was working in Egypt on this big movie, the biggest one Egyptians ever made. Um, that's what, at least that, that's what, what they said. What they were saying and <laughs> claiming, or the production was claiming. But basically, it was a you know you're gonna like it. It was a ripoff of Gladiator, pretty yeah. much, but e uh, the Egyptian version of it. I'll watch that. The producer <laughs> of this uh, 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 whatever company went all the way to UK. Well, actually, went to uh, um, <clears throat> Ireland where they wanted to uh, hire people who did the Viking fights, like all the sword fights, which is very high level and all that. And then they will actually find the team. So I, I did two seasons of Vikings. And like um, and I was offered as well, like, um, okay, we're getting the team. They need, like, this kind of style of fighting. So we go to Egypt. We do this two weeks of shooting, blah, blah, blah. And it was pretty good, a lot of fun. We did, I think, we, we achieved what we were looking for. And then we still haven't had paid for in two years. What? Like, the stunt guys haven't had paid. Um, the uh, producer is in jail. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, the producer is in jail. And then now they finally start talking about that we're actually going to get paid because, like, there's a new producer and yeah. whatever, whatever. But this is film industry, you know. This is uh, about anything. Anything, like, you need to, you know, go from just so many things to consider and it's not easy at all mm. to get those things done and so whoever get things done like you know kudos for them and and well done yeah so yeah yeah sick yeah. stuff sick stuff but uh what else we can uh like one thing what i can you know i hope next time if you have a fighting scene like invite me because like i was looking at that oh we could sell that better i was like yeah. that reaction could work better well, that punch could work better but you know, not not name dropping yeah. But uh, <coughs> Anthony, <laughs> oh shit! Anthony had a sore back, oh, so right. he couldn't fucking move properly. We had to do, we had to adjust with things. I right. even had the one scene where Christy threw a triangle on him, mm -hmm. and, and he picks her up. Yeah. We had our driver help pick Christy up, and then I realised he was in, <laughs> the driver was in half the shot. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> so I had to, I had to. Zoom right in and move it right over and make sure that I, the the driver yeah, wasn't in there. Um, but yeah, there was like lots of things. Sort of, we I try to work around and yeah, yeah. Obviously, none of them have ever done fight scene yeah. stuff before. So, like, really trying to sell shots and mm, 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 you know mm. make it look more yeah. realistic. Um, and that's where I kind of itch a little bit, like because I wish I would be there and I could just come and give like little just ideas because all of them are fighters. All yeah. of them know how to fucking move. It's more about like how to sell it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, that's, yeah. there was one there was one punch which was terrible. <laughs> where Christy was on the floor and he sort of hit, but oh it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> sell, just swing, <laughs> like swing that. hard, like just obviously not at don't a head, punch just him in the face. <laughs> you know, just swing it through, like. Oh uh, man, but it's so crazy. Like I have, I have a, a story for you, uh, Joe, Joe Egan. Um, I probably put a photo here. He used to be Mike Tyson's sparring buddy. Yeah. So he's from Ireland. He's in Ireland. He was the uh, heavyweight champion. 
right? Yeah. And I was in a movie called a, uh, a Once Upon a Time in London. So that was this uh, this film about gangsters. And there's a scene where I'm in this whatever one gang, and Joe Egan is one of the heavies from the other gang. Yeah. They're bursting in in this pub, and the fight is starting and everything, and. Um, and I end up fighting with Joe Egan, which is this, this massive dude. And uh, he's like, I kind of, we're going through choreography quite slow, whatever. And he, as he punches me, even we go faster, like he's this close to my face. His fist is n- fuck like this. I'm not probably, even, heavyweight? probably yeah. even bigger. Like his one finger is like that. And I was just like, I, one thing I don't want to get is punched by this guy in my <laughs> face, you know? <laughs> And um, and then we got in rehearsal, and so he gets more excited. I think he's done like a couple, maybe two movies. I don't think he's done much fighting on the screen. And uh, he's going faster and faster and faster. And at one point, I just feel like this wind just like <laughs> wafts in front of my face. And I came, I was like, you know what? I don't give a fuck. I don't, you celebrity, whoever the fuck you are. I was like, I don't want to be killed. I'm like, Joe, do you mind like having like this distance? The camera is behind you or behind me. They're never going to see the distance. It's totally yeah. fine. And then his response was like, oh, well, thank you. I appreciate your concern, but I've been fighting or I've been boxing for all my life. Yeah. And I know my distance. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then for me, I knew that he, he he comes close. So I just like automatically will push my head away. Yeah. And it was fine. But then he fights, fights me. And then he turns around and he fights another guy. And then like we fight, fight. We, it was a take. Fights, fights, fights. He beats me up, whatever. Then he turns the other guy, knocks the guy out. Oh, no. And he just clipped him on the chin, but the guy was out cold. <laughs> and then Joe Egan is just all over him. He's like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And then he looks at me and I'm like, <laughs> I'm having this smirk. I'm like, so what's up, motherfucker? <laughs> and I know you've like, been fighting all your life, but uh, this ain't fighting. Yeah, and you <laughs> this is acting. <laughs> exactly, and this is that's the thing about stunts is just like it's so different, and all these little things. What works for screen? One of the craziest things: the martial art where everyone knows silat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So fast, it's too fast for screen. Yeah, it's just too fast. So like. You know, and then the punches which sells like big, make them big, yeah. all that. And even though it looks phony, but that's what sells. But that's what sells, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I remember when I, I worked on a short film, it was a fan film, uh, Fallout Lanius. Mm-hmm. It was created in Perth and um, it was about the game Fallout. And yeah, I, I, I ended up acting as filling in for a whole bunch of different actors to die. Because mm-hmm. they didn't know how to like fall on the yeah, floor yeah, yeah. or which is huge, whatever yeah. you know. And um, so yeah, I, and then but we were like, oh yeah, I'm because I come from fighting and never done fight choreography mm-hmm. before. I'm like, oh yeah, there, there. And I'm like, they're like, nah, nah, it's got to be out and like this and big and wide. And I'm yeah, like, uh, oh, okay, but that's not how you fight. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> that is the craziest one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I remember like again this edition we went for Star Wars. And every movie have uh, different uh, fight choreographers, different stunt coordinators, and they have their own styles. Mm. You know, they obviously they c- connect, uh, communicate with the director and how the director sees that. If like literally it could be the same guy uh, uh, playing um, different characters in different movies, all these the same uh, ones get shot in the head. Yeah. In all these movies, they're gonna have different reactions. Yeah. It dependingly how stunt coordinator wants it, how the director wants it. Do I make it really massive? Or do I just do this? Yeah. Like it's a very, very different approach. And then yeah, I went to the Star Wars thing and this audition, and the guy wanted everything massive. I was like, what the hell is this? I just kind of started doing stunts. Yeah, just during the, uh, and I was like asking, almost like saying, no, this is not the way you do it. It was like, no one gives a fuck. You do the way I ask you to do. <laughs> nice one. This is a ha- second half. I'm gonna have another break and then we do one more half. Boosh. Done. Chocolate is eaten. It's all good. We're back. Um, yeah. So fighting, movie stuff, filming, doing special effects. That's kind of your priorities at the moment. Do you have any other hobbies? Do you do anything else? Uh, nah, not really. That's that's sort of it. Um, fighting and the video stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and Photoshop. Yeah. And Photoshop. So that's like separate for like pictures? Pictures, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you do them as well as like um, kind of a side thing or that's your part of your business or? Pa- part of my business. So oh, okay. make like movie posters and and graphic design for like 
companies for their social media and all that sort of stuff. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, well, I asked you your three favorite books, <laughs> and Ryan was like, yeah, the, I don't read books. I don't read I them. just fight. <laughs> <laughs> I watch picture books. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of those kids, like who's like, oh, book? Is there any pictures? Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and images. Pic that's what. But you, that's that means you do a lot of comics stuff, right? No, no, no not even comics. Anything that is hard copy that's not on the TV, I don't. Not do interested. It. Don't do it. What about Kindle? I'll give you Kindle. Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's, that, that's a halfway between. Still on the screen, I guess. <laughs> I'm so good. I still want to convince uh, Ryan to to read some books, but oh maybe well. One day. One maybe day. One day. There you go. Um, okay. So and then you said like, well, no books, but there are movies and there are people. And movies, which you already mentioned, was Gladiator. Gladiator. Yeah. So that's one of the, your big, big inspirations and in getting into it. And uh, that's the thing. Like, it's such a magic how. This one film inspires so many people all over the world. Yeah. It's insane. I yeah, I think I really related to Gladiator because of martial arts as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like the fighting, the martial arts, the competition. Right, right, um, right. Except for they were all slaves, but Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a little bit. And also martial arts so in the Gladiator, I didn't see any roundhouses there. There was no roundhouses. <laughs> there was, there was, was lots of stabbing and neck cutting and <laughs> maybe a couple of shitty push kicks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would, I would love to see Russell Crowe to get to do a roundhouse. <laughs> <laughs> spinning, spinning hook kick. Spinning hook kick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they could just do their own version of it. Uh, but for me, you know, definitely Gladiator was special since I was a kid. I, I just loved the movie. Mm. The, um, you know, I, I was very upset about how his, uh, you know, family got slayed. Yeah. You know, yeah. just I just couldn't understand why someone should be so <laughs> evil <laughs> to, to kill these innocent, you know, a child and a, and a it wife. Had nothing to do with anything. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, that prince was just so evil as well. Like yeah. That, the young motherfucker. Yeah. But... The story for me goes very interesting is that uh, I end up working with a lot of guys who worked in the uh, uh, the Gladiator. That's one awesome. of actually my stunt coordinators who is one of my favorite dudes. His name is... Uh, shit, <laughs> just flew out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, Tony, Tony, uh, Jesus. I will need to cut this out. Like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> well, I know that he's never going to watch it anyways. Um, but anyways, yeah, so one of the stunt coordinators I worked with, he um, he was in a, that scene, remember, where the, that asshole Prince was practicing his fight with these yeah. topless guys? Yeah. And then one of them was uh, the, uh, my stunt coordinator, and... Uh, he uh, he was topless, all muscly, and now he's fat. <laughs> <laughs> and I just reminded him once in a while. He's like, "Shut up, Renard! Just yeah. just shut up." That's uh, that was then, but yeah, and a lot of them. And there was that. I remember it's very vivid. There's this one big black guy who is fighting on an arena. Yeah. And I met that stunt guy uh, years uh, actually on the last um, Kingsman we did together. Yeah. And he was he was this older gentleman, and he lives in Canada now. And uh, we were talking about, I was like, so what kind of things you've done? And he mentioned Gladiator and he was the guy there. I was like, oh shit. That's awesome. Yeah. And I think, I'm not sure that he was the one who got stabbed with the Yeah, with the yeah, thing. I remember that. In the yeah. balls? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, not in the balls, <laughs> in the stomach. In the stomach. Yeah, yeah. yeah, with the triangle. What do you call it? I don't know. It looked like a, some sort of fishing spear. Trident. It's called oh, trident. trident. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. From... Um, the uh, who had a trident? One Aquaman. Aqu <laughs> <laughs> no, Poseidon. No, Poseidon. Yeah. No. Poseidon. Poseidon. <laughs> Poseidon. In Latin, it was Poseidon. <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking Aquaman. Oh my god. He had a trident. <laughs> yeah. No, he did. He did. At the end, he got it because it was his. Um, like birthright or whatever that yeah. uh, weapon. Anyways, um, yeah, and the coolest thing was that I worked on the big movie, and I mentioned already <clears throat> to you about um, the Napoleon. So Napoleon is played by Joaquin Phoenix, the asshole prince. Yeah. And that's 20 years later with the same direct, uh, director. Yeah. What's the director's name? <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, I just remember. like my head is not working anymore. Um yeah, anyone knows, everyone knows who's... Uh, and, and 20 years later, we were in exactly the same scene where what was opening scene for the uh, Gladiator. 
Remember they were throwing these fireballs in the forest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and well, I was there in this stupid Napoleon army outfit <laughs> yeah. with a <the> fake stash <laughs> <laughs> sitting in a <laughs> sitting in trenches. <laughs> um yeah, and but 20 late 20 years later. Um uh, that was Ridley Scott. Jeez, I couldn't Ridley Scott. Yeah, Ridley Scott is the director. Uh, was it Ridley Scott? No, it wasn't. Was it? The guy that made Alien. Wait, uh, that's it. There's going to be a lot of editing for this <laughs> fucking podcast. This guy. He yeah. says he's in the <laughs> film industry. <laughs> uh, gladiator, uh, director. Yeah, Ridley Scott. It was Ridley Scott. Eat yeah. shit, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really doubting my own fucking knowledge. <laughs> was it Ridley Scott? I went in that film for two and a half months, motherfucker. It's like uh, almost every day I would see that guy. It was like, well, it's not like it was like, uh, hey, Ridley, what's up? <laughs> Yo. Yeah, he was sitting. It's interesting. His method for you as someone who makes movies, he never would leave his um, trailer. He would sit in a trailer which is full with like monitors. So he yeah. sees about, and he's also famous for having 20 cameras all over the place. Yeah. So he puts them everywhere and then they film and then he uses them, whatever, uh, how he uses. So that's his kind of trademark yeah. ways uh, to, to work with. And, um, but yeah, I just talked to him a couple of times coming out and saying some shit to people. <laughs> that's about it. Uh, but Napoleon is going to be sick. 90 horses charging like going through people yeah i remember a lot of stunt guys <clears throat> had to wear diaper because we were peeing ourselves from like imagine <laughs> just like 90 horses are charging full gallop and you have to stand there <laughs> they're going through you that was fun oh that would have been scary <laughs> uh, that was and then then someone said like no i'm gonna stand behind because like we had three rows <laughs> so yeah whoever's in front would get the most kind of but then this, the guy behind no you know what this guy slides in me it's, it even hurts even more <laughs> 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 they're just kind of trying to figure out this shit okay so gladiator that's your uh, movie number one so what is your favorite scene um oh. are you not entertained are you not entertained <laughs> he just goes out there and fucks everybody up yeah um when he sl slides the head slice off slice the head off double head drop yeah, yeah. thingy that was interesting because directors or someone was saying that they didn't really had a budget for that yeah but they somehow did this oh it was russell crowe russell crowe wanted to do this move he really fell in love with it yeah but then they really struggled because like no budget whatever but then they managed it to do it somehow somehow yeah awesome um yeah i'm not sure what my favorite scene is it's that that's a pretty good scene where he goes out there mm -hmm. and and fucks everyone up um, what about the forest fight? I really liked I, the beginning. I, yeah, the opening scene is yeah. is probably one of the best capturing moments mm. of of the whole film. You know, I, I think that <clears throat> that opening scene just like draws you in to no, but the scene where he's supposed to be killed when he was supposed to be taken to the forest. To oh, yes. To. Yeah, actually, that was really yeah. cool. Yeah. When he took and threw that fucking sword into this... Uh, yeah. Praetorian. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, the sword got Some, stuck in. Sometimes the blade sticks. Yes, man. <laughs> Say it again. Sometimes the blade sticks. <laughs> Sticky blade. <laughs> please, please use proper lubricant. <laughs> okay, then we have the very gay movie called Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, again, working with this guy, uh, we did the uh, Men in Black. Yeah, with um, uh, the f fourth one. The um, yeah, the fourth one. Yeah. Uh, Fuck, what's his name? <laughs> uh, fuck. <laughs> Hemsworth. <laughs> Chris Hemsworth, yeah. And Chris is such a cool dude, man. He like, seems like a cool he's dude. He's really nice. Like, he's, in, you know, I didn't see him that many times, but like the, the any time, like five or six times we were working side by side, he always came across as a kid. Just want to play around, giggle around, and he's like, he feels there's not. It's like someone who feels there's too much silence. He needs to fill it up with like laughter. Yeah, and then he would do something stupid, <laughs> just like whip a dick out or something. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get to see that coming. <laughs> whip his hammer out. Eh? Oh <laughs> shit, Thor. <laughs> That's who was to see the real Thor. <laughs> 
the tiny, the uh, Thor Junior. The Thor Junior. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what about Thor Ragnarok? Uh, obviously, the whole bringing imagination to life. Mm-hmm. You know, they're on a different planet and stuff like that. But I really like that one because it's sort of serious, but they have a lot of comedy through it. Right, right, right. You know, yeah, I do like that they throw the comedy in there. Yeah, and it's don't watch that shit one that they've just made. Um, with the Russell Crowe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thor fucking Love and Thunder. That was the worst movie I've ever fucking seen. <laughs> and I heard Chris Hemsworth actually said he's not playing Thor if he has to play dumb Thor. Yeah. Again, yeah. he's like, he goes from playing dumb Thor to going to, into the Avengers where he's uh, not dumb. <laughs> not dumb. <laughs> and not then dumb. on so top simple. of it, Hulk is fucking smart. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> Since when is that happening? <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember the comics. I, I well, no, I never read the comics, but yeah. you know, I don't read books. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we established that like ten times already today. Thank you. Um, but my mate read a lot of comics, and yeah. I, I, I think he would do a movie for you, <laughs> <laughs> so you can watch on the screen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think Thor becomes smart Thor when he went off planet. Oh uh, right, mm. he went yeah, off. Part of his survival thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, comics. We didn't, dis- makes, you know, we didn't uh, finish discussing the uh, the Hulk being smart. Uh, did I ask you what do you think about him getting smart? Ah, oh, um, oh, you said the comic in comics he in does the comics get smart. He gets smart, oh, yeah. Right, right, right. Which I watched a. It's called Planet Hulk. It's a cartoon mm-hmm. um, where it's sort of like Thor Ragnarok, mm-hmm. but different. Um, and he's smart Hulk there as well. He can right, right. he can talk and communicate and all right. Not as smart as he is in the Avengers movie, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He sort of plays his role as being smart. Yeah. But I just want him to break shit. What is the other creature they... Um, so this is... There's... Um, um, the one was like... A, a Korg? All covered with the um, rock. Korg. Uh, Kor- Kork. Korg. Korg. K-O-R-G. He's I think. like kind of very similar concept of Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. He um, He's just made a rock. He's in Planet Hulk as well. The oh, cartoon. is he? Yeah, and so is that little beetle thing that Korg steps on in... <laughs> wait, uh, I forgot its name. <laughs> <laughs> and what, size-wise, are they similar? Yes. Oh. Yeah. They could be brothers. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> what if the, uh, that one would be a, a girl one, so they could go on a date? Oh, this is very rocky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we have Matrix. Oh, obviously classic. You know, anyone yeah. who is in special effects, but anyone who likes movies or... Especially the f- uh, fantasy, like, the, you know, the Matrix is the king of the kings. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that really brought a lot of the VFX stuff mm, to on life, the map. Yeah. Know, yeah. On the map, yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people didn't realize w- there's obviously VFX in almost every film. Right, right, know? right. Whether it's old films, not old films, but, you know, where they set it back in time or yeah. or it's uh, space and sci fi. Um, but yeah, The Matrix was definitely one of my favorites. Still, what was the year difference between uh, second Terminator and Matrix? The second Terminator. Yeah, what, what in years? Because second Terminator was before Matrix. Yeah, Term- right? Terminator Two was was that nineteen eighty four? Eighty four was the first one, I think, because that's the year I was 89? born. Eighty uh, nine. Okay, let's I see. Don't know. I okay. obviously was minus. I was two years old, I think, if it came out at 89. Okay, let's so. play this game, what um, a lot of po- podcasts do. So let's guess what's the age difference or the year difference between Second Terminator and Matrix. What do you think it is? Oh, Second Terminator and Matrix. 12 years? You think 12 years, yeah? yeah. And then, okay. okay. So Matrix was in 1999. Yep, that's what I thought. Maybe 87. Four. What, 88 for um, Terminator 2? 1991. So, yeah, eight, we just found... Fa- yeah, so we just found out it's an eight years <coughs> difference between Terminator 2 and Matrix. And the reason why I wanted to say that is because... Uh, remember there was this uh, documentary on Netflix, uh, Movies That Made Us? Yeah, I didn't watch it, no. It's not a book. I know, you but I, I haven't <laughs> seen that one. <laughs> I didn't even know it was that. I'll watch it if it's I... It's not a book. I, you can fucking watch it. You don't have to read it. It's a documentary. It's close to a book. Yeah, yeah. It's 
<laughs> that's on the verge of me not uh, consuming it. Um, yeah, but it was really I really enjoyed that. The movies that made us, and they they were going through each of these films. I think you would definitely enjoy it. How like the obstacles they have to make them the the old sorts of issues, like mm -hmm. Jurassic Park, for example. They had the biggest issue was how they're gonna create this big fucking doll which is moving or this puppet or whatever. Yeah. Like the um, uh, probably your favorite movie ever, the uh, Dirty Dancing. <laughs> oh yeah, love Dirty Dancing. <laughs> they, they they were not even thinking making that movie. Someone just dig up the 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 script and and somehow just put it in a light but it was it shouldn't be happening yeah also they were talking about home alone home alone actually became very popular for people stunt from stunt industry calling up to the stunt guys who were in that home alone how they made all those falls look so real yeah and they look like they got Bastard yeah, up. and those stunt guys were literally they having this interview and they like, well, we just jumped in and we just fell. Because <laughs> me as a stunt guy, I also look at it like, what kind of back pad do you need to do when it, they do this like a slip and fall backwards yeah. uh, from the staircase? Yeah. Oh, that. Yeah, and so going back, the uh, so Terminator Two, and they were talking about the creation of it was the pioneer of just breaking into the special effects. Yeah. Which was insane. Where the guy goes through the uh, the fire? No, 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 not the fire. Fire as well. Oh, when he walks through the gate, hey, the metal dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when metal. he walks through the um, uh, in prison, you have yeah, these yeah, the, the how do you call metal them? metal gate metal bars? Yeah, yeah. through the bars, and the gun just stuck. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> stuck <laughs> and click, 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 click. <laughs> and yeah, but then eight years later, Matrix, mm. and um, I don't know. You see, like I didn't. Well, I did. Sp I would say like pay attention to certain special effects, like when Trinity is just like floating in the air and the slow I motion. That's like a super and, typical. And where he leans back on the bullets flying past. Yeah, him, like, yeah. Uh, I think they were the the capturing moments the of the VFX ones. because it was all slowed down and everyone yeah. would be like, "How did they do that?" Yeah, because the slow motion wasn't a big thing before that, right? No, it wasn't. They slow, were like, especially slow motion fights. It was no, yeah, no such yeah, thing yeah. as slow motion fights. Yeah, you know, and now slow motion is every fucking fight. Every fight. <laughs> Like, boom. Uh, Especially <laughs> Bollywood loves their slow motion. Yeah. Oh, man. Some of those cringy fights they have, and it's just all slow motion. Oh. Um, but yeah, to, uh, and Matrix, for me, the biggest one was the, the martial arts, actually. Mm. For me, I thought, wow, the wall flip. Yeah. So, which one I mastered years later. Um, but the idea that, you know, just, just wall flip and different fighting, and it was like, wow, that for me was like really cool. Yeah, oh. yeah, and I really thought like, is there a way I can just learn all the martial arts? <laughs> Where is the chip? Where is the EI? <laughs> Do you think that's going to happen anytime soon? We what's, get what's your opinion? We get computerized. Yeah, so we can just download any any skill, any knowledge. I think that would be quite far away. I think they'd yeah. be more likely to turn us into bloody. Just do what they say, robots. Really? Oh, nice. I like yeah. the outlook for they, the future. They, they keep talking about, oh, we've got these chips now that <laughs> you can you can have your bank account in your chip and you can... Um, oh, wait, the chips we got from COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, we've got a chip that helps say where you are. Like, why the fuck do I want to tell you where I am? I just, fuck. You know... Okay, we have two more movies, Jurassic Park, which I just mentioned. Um, Iconic. Yeah, so iconic. It's uh, it's it's real crazy. And again, Jurassic Park was one and of the do in documentary. They were talking about how they chose that uh, professor guy. Yeah, like, and he has to speak with that. Uh, they ask him to do American accent, but he's uh, someone from Nordic countries, and he's like, I can't, I cannot really do it. <laughs> and then he did his best, and they're like, Oh, that's fine. It's yeah. kind of like we like this in between. He did a good job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he did smashed it. Yeah. yeah, and Jurassic Park literally still lives up to movies today, mm, like mm, the mm. the effects and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I think just because a lot of it was animatronic, so yeah, it, was, yeah. it was it looks realistic. It's not CGI. Yeah. And those guys who were building those dolls, man, they did some serious shit there. Mm. Like just building that whole crane thingy whatever like a dinosaur and moving and stuff and then they said like oh it's it might fall on you <laughs> you're gonna kill you oh <laughs> shit <laughs> and then last one is john wick uh which is you know again so now there's a john wick four yeah it john wick came four out. is it is it out already i think it's out um oh, i saw the trailer yeah yeah yeah, I like John Wick a lot. A lot of the, a lot for the fight scenes and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. But that's basically all it is. It's one, 
It's yeah. one giant fight scene. <laughs> Fight scenes, but mainly so much just uh, shooting. It's like a lot of a lot of shooting stuff. Yeah, but it's a lot of like martial arts with yeah, shooting, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, true. as true, opposed true. to just a, a war film. You know, yeah, yeah, just shooting. Yeah. No, th- that's agreed. It, but it's just like if you compare like martial art film and then you know the action movie. So mm. they, I would say, do they do fifty fifty? I'd say martial arts forty. 60 maybe maybe that way but i like the brutality of this martial arts stuff it's not only pretty kicks and pretty punches it's no. just like so gritty like That's head what I and elbows and just yeah. slam your face into a wall while i then shoot you yeah you know yeah but the, again it's funny like i watched you know the all the three ones and like every sec- every next one story is yeah and then the action is just getting better and better. Right? Yeah. And like when I look at the story in the first one, I uh, the actor who was playing that asshole son who yeah. stole killed his dog, that actor was also playing in um, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Theo. The guy whose dick got Theo. cut Theo. off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I was Literally. thinking he finally paid back. <laughs> <laughs> He finally paid for the John Wick, stealing John Wick's dog. It's like, can you imagine if the Game of Thrones all of a sudden they would open up there, <laughs> ask his dick get cuts off, and then John Wick is just in the back. Yeah, now you got what you, got, what you deserve. Yeah. <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I really like that he was, you know, that, that, that asshole, and like John has this mission to pay back. Mm, they killed his dog. Yeah, and I like that this father who supposedly is so powerful and he's like, you don't mess around with him. But even his father were pissing in his pants when he found out that the Baba Yaga is going to get him. <laughs> Baba Gula. No. Baba, Baba, Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga. Yeah, yeah, Baba Yaga. It's not Baby Gula. Baba Baba Gula, Gula. That's, <laughs> that's bloody pork. <laughs> yeah, in Bali, for those who don't know, Baba Guling is a traditional uh, pork, like a uh, uh, boiled roasted i think it's roasted roasted pork. roasted pig uh what they usually have for ceremonies yeah we had that one when we opened coffee shop yeah yeah and there was like guys were messaging hey guys do do we want for a bobby gulling for our ceremony and i was like because i was so excited that we were opening coffee shop i was like yeah yes to everything <laughs> and then i come over and we did the ceremony i was like i see this roasted pig there i'm like what the hell's going on <laughs> you ordered that and also you paid two mil for this bitch yeah <laughs> and i'm like what <laughs> Yeah, Bobby Gulling. Bobby Gulling. Yeah. Uh, John Wick. Um, and you, how how uh, how legit do you think he is with all the martial arts and like doing BJJ? Well, he he trains BJJ. He trains BJJ. He trains judo. He yeah. trains um, Krav Maga. He he does as much training as he can. Mm-hmm. I think he's a blue belt in in jiu jitsu. I think it was uh, purple. Oh, he might have got. He might, yeah, probably. Like mm. he. He's a. I think he's dedicated to no. like learning martial arts and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, he obviously makes it look real on yeah. on TV. What would be your feeling one day if you would be directing a movie where John when uh, Keanu Reeves Keanu Reeves is in? Yeah, be amazing. <laughs> Just for me. Like, uh, bro. Uh, Keanu, that was amazing. Yeah, uh, that was great. It was probably terrible. And like, <laughs> bro, that was so good. Can you kill me? <laughs> can I, I be wanna, one of your victims? I just want to die. I know I'm directing, but can I please? <laughs> <laughs> and this is one of the coolest things is then when you're on a big uh, film sets and you do work with those celebrities, you know there's, if any, like stunt guys can come and over doing like a selfie or whatever, actors usually don't mind. Mm. I hate it. I literally, I have n- not even one selfie with anyone. Yeah. And uh, because we're there, we are working. And these people, when they get outside here, that's all they see is fucking selfies. Yeah. Everyone wants some I'm, piece of that. I'm that person that doesn't do that either. Yeah. I, I, see, I see, I even see people in the public and I'm like, oh, like they'll get hassled and I'm just nobody. Mm. And what, I'm going to post a picture and then forget about it, you know? But also like, what do you, what do you do with that? So just cause you were next to a person who succeeded in their life. Yeah. Like how has that make your life better? No. Like how, what right. did you succeed? Or you, did, you succeeded at annoying them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. That's what I was just about to say. Just that, sick, Yeah. That, that's how I look at it as well. So yeah. I, I've, I've been next to lots of celebrities as well. Can't name any right now. Cause I can't think, but yeah. um, I've been, definitely been an ex at least a hundred. Right. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I, you know, I may have been at like next to five or something, but I've never gone up and gone, hey, can I get a photo yeah, with you? Yeah, you know, yeah. I just don't want to be annoying and 
like they, they get that all if the that time. could be mer- memorable and you keep in your memory that's that's all you want like when I worked with uh, Samuel Lee Jackson, Ryan Reynolds, and I'm, I'm like, I have trailer next to their trailer, and I'm like, feel so amazing, and this is like, feel like, oh, finally made it, <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, finally pays back to be a stripper back in the days and <laughs> whatever, but it's just the memory you can keep with you and cherish it, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so and that kind of leads us to people. Yeah, so I asked you also uh, your fave people, people who inspire you, people who you look up to, um, James Cameron. Yeah. It's kind of a heard of uh, a, the director. Is, is he? Director? I think he's a director. <laughs> yeah, I think he directed something. Uh, what was it? Yeah. I think there's something with a boat in it, and there was a boat. There was there. a machine as well <laughs> in a different one. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah Talk ja- to me. James Cameron is director <laughs> of Terminator, director of the Titanic, Just uh, director about of yeah. Avatar. You know. Um, and I watched, uh, Christy got like this um, course course thing and it's like a bunch of directors that talk about their process of mm-hmm. creation, how they started and how they developed as, as directors or or filmmakers, or writers, what whatnot. And um, James Cameron talks about his journey through making Terminator and Titanic and all of that. And uh, Avatar was actually a film that he had in his back pocket for a very long time years and years and years ago he goes to his people he goes can we make this and they're like we don't have the technology no, to make yeah. that right now so he's like okay put it in the mm. in the back pocket and until the technology was developed and yeah then, and then brought it back out fuck he might be like how old is he he's like he at least like 500. 500 years old <laughs> yeah. 80 oh 68 yeah 68 james cameron 68 years old I think he achieved quite a lot of things. That's a lot, lot younger than I thought he was. I thought yeah, he was looks, older than He that. looks good, man. Yeah. yeah he looks good. <clears throat> um, but yeah, Titanic, man. Like I've seen Titanic a million times. Mm. I'm just, I just love that whole idea that all these f- fancy rich fucks died. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> poor people win. <laughs> yeah. Well, lots of fucking poor people died. <laughs> oh, that's true as well. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry for those guys. All those people dancing down under under yeah. the deck. <laughs> yeah, they fa- they died a little bit faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. that that was a. a We're going to America. Film. <laughs> yeah. That guy had the worst accent ever. <laughs> We're going to America. <laughs> Which guy was that? I was the friend of the uh, John. Like, oh, in the yeah, very beginning, yeah. they played cards. Yeah. And he was this Italian immigrant. He wanted to get on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> and they won those tickets. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You just won a death sentence, you motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to America. Good, good trip. Good trip. <laughs> Fucking love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw the set of like, well, I didn't see the set. I saw the video of the set. Yeah. And f- it was massive. They built half the Titanic, mm, Yeah, you know, in uh, some harbor. Yeah. Or, on land, but. And I have some old, old stun guys who are like still <coughs> active, some of them, and they did Titanic. Yeah. And they just talked to them. Yeah, it was falling in the water there. Yeah, we were in the swimming pool there for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I peed a little bit in the swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> No one knows. <laughs> it was a little cold, so I warmed it up for everybody. Well, one of those stun guys we did, uh, he was on Men in Black, the last one where we played with, uh, yep. with Thor. Yep. <laughs> and uh, there was a scene where we're in the casino and uh, and he's like playing one of the players and he just fell asleep <laughs> during the take. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. He's like like 70 years old. <laughs> and like, oh, that's the one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like, yeah, that's how I see my future. I'm that stunt man. <laughs> uh, and the girl at the moment I'm seeing once in a while, we're making jokes. Like, she's like, oh, be careful. And I'm like, I'm a stunt man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm a stunt man. Sorry. I, I'm stealing on your thunder today, man. Like, um, talking too much about myself and shit. Um, James Cameron. And so, what is his, like, does he have like, special technique about filming? Um, what are his like uh, signature moves and so the one thing he he talked about which i was like inspired by as like developing to be a good director was uh collaboration mm. he was a collaborator not like a boss like, like you telling know. what to do but yeah. like instead like obviously it. he'd have his vision and stuff like mm-hmm. that but he used to say i have professionals in the field mm. not to tell them how to do their job 
you know, mm. I'm there to like collaborate and go, okay, how do we mm. achieve this? How do we do this? This is my vision, you know, and work as a team. So I've always liked that. And, yeah, and that's that, great. That's what I really think it's amazing me. talent. It's amazing talent mm. to figure out the strengths and weaknesses around you and like to figure out how we can go for a better good. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's so. awesome. The next one we have Kevin Hart. I heard about him a couple of times. Yeah. 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 That guy is relentless. I mean, like, like looking at the stuff he's done and what he achieved, it's, he has it's achieved incredible. So much, yeah. He's and he's just funny as fuck. Yeah, he's so funny. I wish I was. It would be fun. sad if the comedian wouldn't be funny. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> one of the best comedians in the world is like, he's just not funny. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I think one of the funniest bits with him is like that um, that collaboration from James Cameron uh, with uh, Dwayne Johnson with The Rock. Yeah, it's just like the comparison and their. Uh, which part was that? Uh, J- Jumanji. They worked yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They worked in uh, intelligence, something central, central intelligence. intelligence. I thought that was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember in Central Intelligence, and he, The Rock, pretends to be the shrink. Yeah, and, he, and he's like slap, and then they slap. Have seen the outtakes to that? I'm <laughs> trying to keep a straight face. I think the Rock slapped Kevin a little too hard on one of them. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and he, and Kevin was like, "Fuck!" <laughs> it was too acting. Shit. <laughs> One 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 of my favorite ones was that when they were dangling on a rope and both of them were doing selfie mode, uh, filming, saying, "Oh, I'm just here in my set and something." And that and Kevin does the same time as, "Oh, I'm just here. Oh, dude, fuck off my set. This is my shot. Like, what are you? T- why are you messing up?" That became such a big thing. I remember I I made one of those as well. We were walking off the set, both of us in uh, costumes, and I was like, "Oh, I'm just like here for my for my selfie." And the other guy's like, "Oh, it's my fault." <laughs> I do remember seeing that one. Yeah, that was funny. Uh, yeah, those guys and and Kevin Hart. Yeah, honest. And also, I heard about his kind of up and coming story. He was relentless. He was going to all these uh, places to perform, and he was just killing it, killing it after night after night. I know we're running out of time. So Kevin Hart. Then we have the Duffer Brothers. The have Duffer no Brothers. idea who are those. Sylvester Stallone. So okay, the Duffer Brothers made uh, Stranger Things. Oh, did they? Yeah. Well. I told you that I just worked with uh, Millie Bobby Brown on the uh, the um, um, Anola Holmes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, that they they, cool. they they ca- that was a cool story to hear about how they come up with the Stranger Things. Oh, okay. Yeah. It first of all, it was like because they were all about conspiracies and they loved the eighties theme and all that mm. stuff. So they the conspiracy theme they wanted to stick with about the government sort of stole children and that. And then they talked. It was supposed to follow just Hop, the cop, as mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a cop who was trying to find these children who got yeah, it was stolen. Uh, Officer Hop, Officer Hop, and then they then they they were like, well, what if one of the girls has powers? And then they like say, what do they call it? It's cloud the cloud board where they just throw ideas up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, they're like, yeah, the girl has powers, and how does she have her powers? Maybe she got it from this dim- different dimension, and then, and then they've got alien or not aliens, the monsters, and all that sort of stuff. And so, what? Wait a minute. So the story was kind of made up before for something, or like, no, just the the, the, the way process that, of the, how the process they of how up. they okay. come up with it is like they started with the story, which was supposed to be the government stole some kids, right, and right, right. experiments, okay, got, and they were going to follow Hop, who was detective sort of trying to find the kids and stuff and then yeah they, they call it uh, a cloud board i think it was and they basically just spew all their ideas up mm. on the thing and they just and then they pull it back obviously and it's like make it, make brain, it make brainstorm sense. and then just put them together yeah yeah that's really cool yeah it's, it's crazy when someone come up with that, that idea i was just thinking about this recently about the um um uh, ben Affleck and uh, what they came up with. Um, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Oh my God, my head is not working. They're Goodwill Hunters. You know, yeah. the guys just too too. Were they teenagers? Uh, I think they just turned twenty or something. Both of them super young. Just come up and like, oh, let's write a script and we're gonna be playing in it. Yeah. You know, and that leads us to Sylvester Stallone, like yeah. who's f- super famous for Rocky and the Rocky movies, yeah, and, and the script. The Rocky, he he wrote his script, yeah, yeah, and obviously you would know the story of like yeah, he, yeah. he wanted to sell it, and they were like, yeah, we'll buy it, but you can't be in it. He's like, yeah. no, that's not so, it's I'm in it. That's yeah. that's what's happening. And I remember he, he said in his story, uh, he had a dog, 
Yeah, yeah, that he sold the dog and then he he finally made the Rocky film, got rich, and then went and found his dog again and tried to buy it back, but he had to buy it back for like fifteen thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah, 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 (laughs) yeah. Crazy. Which you did. And then, you know, it's history from there. He just kept getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. That guy's is true inspiration for and it's crazy like how the same poor person's inspiration how to do business and what to stand for in your values in your life and how to act as well mm. oh, it's just it's insane listen we need to wrap it up let you go what are you doing today it's a wrestling wrestling mma wrestling I'm gonna for be, my fight I'm gonna get are you ready. gonna be hugging some uh sweaty half naked man i'm gonna be sweaty and I'm going to hug some... Oh, hug I some like how you look at the camera all the time. You can con- still continue to me. <laughs> Come down. Okay, I'll before you... a good be- time. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> before you leave, um, give me a couple bombs of wisdom. Uh, for if you, are, if you are a mentor uh, for people who want to pursue what you're doing, whether it's uh, in the fighting industry or it's like in the movie industry, I'm guessing in the fighting industry you have a little bit more experience than in the movie industry. Oh, yeah. bricklaying brick industry. Brick you can, lane. yeah, you can give Fuck some... <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have some inspirational words, but also like a, that or what would you tell to y- younger Ryan? Um, who's like about teenage age, maybe like 18. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Probably... Something along the lines of like, think, oh fuck, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was it? Like sort of what we said before about, you know, how Sil- Sylvester Stallone stuck to his values and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. You exactly. know, stick to your values. Um, the general thing, work hard, but, you know, work smart instead of- Work smart, exactly. Instead yeah. of hard, you know. We, we can work hard and get nowhere. No. Or we can work smart and, and go to the top. Exactly. Exactly. Um, cool, man. I think that's it. You just run, do your training. That's going to keep you back anymore. Thank you so much again Thank for you. coming over. Oh, sh- Special effects. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to send you footage. You're going to put that in later. Yeah. <laughs> nice one, buddy. Uh, I just wanted to play that song at the end, but uh, now I can't find it. Anyways, that's <laughs> it. We're done. This is the song in the back. Hey. Oots, oh. oots, oots, oots. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Bruno's Podcast.